Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good feed thus far. I been getting much better video quality and streaming lately so that is a good thing because the last couple of days last like three days before this well maybe yesterday before that the hello greetings the um the feed hasn't wasn't that great before but now it's pretty good like so i have this book i've had for a while since we're coming up on um, Irish Heritage Day, you notice I don't refer to it as St. Patrick's Day because I find that insulting. Like the Catholic Church or whoever, Protestant, what well, doesn't matter. They don't represent the original root. So that's why I am paying tribute to that. That's why in the last few weeks I planned in advance to continue through February reading, you know, like, Irish-based fantasy books, those Kenneth C. Flint books, right? Though they're a little simple, they get to the point, you know what I'm saying, of base um, principles you would live by, and then emphasizing honor code, also all, um, emphasizing the sovereignty goddess, which is always present. And that is what was suppressed originally was the sacredness of that and then leadership being purposefully taken away from as many as possible and especially targeting women because the high priestess was considered you know very high level you know and uh, anyway let's see let's see history and background here i'll show you the uh cover of this a lot of people don't know that there is a difference in, say, Irish Gaelic to, say, Scottish Gaelic. It makes, you know, different um, branches of the language. And that the language would have been infused with animism, such as finding McHugh in my um, family tree. And Hugh being associated with, uh, was it Aodna or something like that. But I'm going to look that up real quick now that I'm thinking of it. Because I know that a lot of people would not consider um, pagan gods being infused. Okay. Okay. Aed. There we go. Okay or A.O. was associated with the name Hugh, right, in the etymology. And I found that very interesting. It's one of my um, um, female ancestors, okay? So, A.E.D. or A.O. A.O.D.H. Let's see. Ah, now this is interesting. Another connection. Aod, or a Ed, Aid, is the prince of the Dao, let's see, Dawin Shi, and a god of the underworld in Irish mythology. He is known from inscriptions as the eldest son of Lear, high king of the Tuatha de Danann. Now, I want you to consider this. Tuathail was related to O'Toole, 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 or even in, I'll just use a movie reference, Willow, and he's like, Tuatha, 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 what was he doing? Hmm, invoking, right? So, since I am related to the O'Toole's, they go back into a high king line. So, I keep finding these connections, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Well, a lot of those that were, you know, originally in leadership or 
you know, positions would have been pushed out for survival. And the people of means would be able to flee the area, where those without means would not, such as those that came to the United States to escape the famine in Ireland that was created and manufactured through the British government. Nothing against English people. That is about elites. Now, here's another connection. High King of the Tuatha Dei Danann and Aob, A-O-B-H, another connection. A daughter, remember we discussed him, of Bodurg, right? Which was an Orc Druid, high level. Aid is elsewhere described, let's see, in the Din Senkas, as being the Dogda's son and brother of Sir Mate and Angus killed by Corkin of Kruok or seducing Crokin's wife. Now that sounds very, very similar to the Arthurian tale, but that would be like a morality play or a virtue play that you would have learned that. Now, I'm going to click on AO. Mm, doesn't really have much. So, some t nothing on Wikipedia. It has a name. That is it. Okay. So, cross-referencing. I'm going to go ahead and put that into the search engine and see what pops up. But as I notice a pattern, and this is the pattern I've seen, it is the defilement of the sovereignty of the land. Okay. For personal gain. Now, now, get into this. Uh huh. Interesting. So we're going to go to the meaning of names. Okay. If you're still here, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I hope somebody else shows up. It's not just me out here. Okay. The name Aob, which is A-O-B-H, is a girl's name of Irish Gaelic origin, meaning beauty and radiance. So that is interesting to me. Beauty and radiance. What does that possibly infer? Light. So, what did I say about magic being a Latin and Persian overwrite of our folk soul spiritual concepts? We did not practice magic. Clear? That is the magi that has zero to do with our people. That is why I do not use that term, I, you know, unless it is to generalize because that's what people are familiar with. But then I will relate it and explain the reality that it has no relation to my people at all. Now, web of word does, you see, but with Gardner, the overlay was the more Latin overlay. Same with Crowley. Why are they using magic? Because they are using the Latin form. What were the Catholic priests doing? They were casting spells because they were dark magicians. You see, they were using Latin as a curse. And if they are cursing you, you don't know that. Enslaving using esoteric uh, power. They are siphoning the folk soul of the people and then using it as a weapon back against them. That's what's up. Now, the other very interesting connection that I was led to today has to do with the Corona virus. Okay. And Corona meaning crown, literally the, the curse of the crown. So, in pharmacopoeia, it is highly esoteric and occult in origin. It is directly related to what was done. 
they took out the active principle, throwing everything out of balance, okay? So when you have, say, a pharmaceutical, it is an isolate. This is what my dad taught me. Instead of being the whole herb. This is what has been going on. And so all these people go, I would have practiced magic. You have no concept of where that even comes from. But yet you were like, I, I practice magic. It is magi. It is Persian in origin. It is related back into uh, manipulation and overlay, overwrite. As I said, that is why I do not use that term to describe myself. I am not a magi. With that said, making that very clear, the folk soul light, that is something completely different because the origin and intention of that is, is saying union with the land. So if you look up description of what magic is, they describe it as fusion with the forces of nature, that you are able to control the forces of nature through will and consciousness. Okay. Well, what is the difference between that and, let's say, the goddess of sovereignty of a specific land and area? Well, it might be somewhat relatable, right? But it is soul and intention and will. As I said, As the I said, web of web word. word. That's why it was infused, infused into weaving. weaving. And they weave in, in deception. deception. Through using these key influencers over society. society. Right? right? John D. John had a direct, direct connection direct back into back original, into original Druidry. Druidry. But it was twisted. It was twisted. He was Welsh. He was Welsh. And you're starting to see a pattern. Everything leads back to Wales, Ireland, Scotland. All these tribes were interrelated. Right? And since I am still a remnant where I still have strong bloodlines and connections to that, my goal moving forward would to be to meet someone as folkish as I am which is a very hard thing to do in this society because most people are focused on credit card reality. They are not focused on grounding into core root. They don't even know what that is because you are so programmed through the educational systems to just mimic and memorize, right? Whatever they say. Then you are a successful student. But the moment you challenge the main line, you are thrown out. Now, let's say you are a scholar and you are dealing with other people who are peer review, right? And they are paid to be in that position. They are gate holders, gatekeepers. And they will not allow anything other than the line they want to be there. So that is why, if you're an alternative researcher or, or alternative historian, you have to leave the mainstream. There is no other choice. No one will listen to you. It's like speaking a completely different language that they don't even comprehend. So, here we go. Introduction. History and background. Irish belongs to the Celtic family of languages, which has two branches. The Gaelic branch consists of Irish, Scottish, Gaelic, and Manx. Now, which is extinct. No, it isn't. It's that uh, no one's speaking those languages. And for me, as I go on, it's becoming key and more important that I learn, like, you know, learn Gaelic, learn Swedish, you know, something. Okay. But I didn't get raised with that education. Had I been raised, right, in upper classes, I might have possibly had an opportunity to do that. However, spoiled brats do not appreciate what they have. And so they will not seek it. You got to have drive, right? 
or you'll never go there. It's it's too much complex study. And that is where um, prioritizing focus comes in and realizing and focus at first. Are the keynote important base elements of what my study is taken care of? If not so, go back and restabilize those centers. It is key and important in growth. That is my opinion. That is what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing. Okay. Welsh, Breton, and Cornish. Let's see in again, which is extinct. Why are they? Why do they keep saying that? Huh? Make up the other branch of the Celtic languages, but they differ too much from the Gaelic group for understanding. Irish is called Gaelic or Gaelic, i.e. by its speakers, but the English word Gaelic, unqualified, normally refers only to its sister language in Scotland. Interesting. Until the 12th century, the social position of Irish was not seriously challenged till the 12th century. Huh. 1066, I always relate back to Charlemagne, as I have learned. And even the Vikings who settled in Ireland about a thousand years ago tended to learn Irish. There's a fusion of, of Irish and Nordic. And I'm going to go so far to say that the Nords and, and the Celts, whatever, uh, the Irish, the, the Gaelic, are all related. And that's, that's where I'm going with this. All these tribes are interrelated. However, However, the arrival, arrival of the Anglo-Normans, I'm generalizing, I know, in 1169 marked the beginning of a period of four centuries, here we go, 400 years, during which the country gradually became subject to the English crown. What is the coronavirus about? Subjugation to the crown. Oh, but that's oh, just but my, that's opinion, my opinion, of course. Of course. Of course. I think I've, I've made, made my, my point. point. Let's, see. Let's see. The new, the new state set out, set to, out rescue to rescue the language, the language from, extinction from extinction and favorable policies have been maintained the Irish speaking in the Irish speaking districts. Up to 30,000 people use Irish as a daily language in these areas, collectively known as Gale Talk. So now, if they come in and say outlaw bards and they say, you may not speak your native language, and if you're caught doing that in public, now you have been uh, outsted. You can't even sing in your own native language. That's your power center. That is done intentionally. Now, with sound and oral tradition being the original, why would they target the oral tradition as being simple-minded and for the fool? Because oral tradition required memorization and internalization to the point where it was visceral. You did not forget. It was permanently infused as a part of you. So moving forward to St. Patrick's Day, I look at that as a psychological, spiritual offensive and a spell that has been cast over my people in general. I don't care if that is Sweden, Ireland, Scotland, England, whatever, all of those connections. And so, the overlay of the goddess of sovereignty is major. Not to mention, I feel that I was born on that on Bridget's Day for a reason. It's undeniable. There are so many interconnections for me personally. It's mind blowing. All I can do is just sit there and go, "Wow." And I'm sure my father knew one day I would figure out all these connections. But he left it like a, a breadcrumb trail for me to find. He would give me enough, enough information to go look. But he wanted me to look for myself. That is directly pagan. 
Okay. 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 You have to choose freely to serve the sovereignty of the goddess and the land, or you are not the true king. For the true king or true queen has a true heart. That means they love their people. That also means they will not betray. Now, if you are an evil person and you know that, you want to come in and take over, you're greedy. You're a dark, uh, dark druid, dark wizard, whatever. You will undermine. You will take the knowledge and wisdom, and then you will twist it and turn it as a weapon, such as certain herbs could be used for healing or be a poison. Who's to say that the Black Plague was not a bunch of people dropping dead fucking rats in goddamn wells all over the fucking place? All of a sudden, you got a breakout. They know what wells not to drink from. Population control. This is just my, you know. Now, relate that to modern day coronavirus. It is the same shit. Now, also note it is a presidential year. Why didn't we have coronavirus last year? Oh, it just, you know, it just happens to be 2020. I told you at the beginning of this year that occult shit was going to start popping off on a high level because they're pushing to the next level, right? They're going to build that, that temple, right? That's a big thing to them, all right? Not to mention the history involved, that the original headquarters was inside the Dome of the Rock for the Knights Templar, all right? Anyway. Not talking specifically against any groups. I'm just stating history and reality from what is publicly available that I have read. And so the overlay overwrite took over the warrior class, right? The overwrite becomes Arthur, who is not the original sovereign. He is a Roman overwrite as well as Uther. And that was, that was done intentionally. That's why Latin came in and overwrote everything. So, honoring the goddess of sovereignty of the land is paramount. And it was interesting when I was reading that Morgan was not portrayed as this evil, horrible goddess. So I began to question. And I started looking. And I started seeing how consistently Morgan is shown as evil. Right? No, she is not. She enforces the oath. Right? Right? And the honoring of the sovereignty of the land. And if you don't honor that, she will destroy you. Because you are not true love. You hear? Of the people. You are a selfish pig. There is a big difference. That doesn't mean you can't survive. What it means is you don't love your people. You love power over others. And until that is brought into balance on the earth, there will continue to be dis, you know, uh, disharmony. That is why I'm saying there must be a counterbalance. So whatever the goddess of sovereignty is, I feel eventually that power is going to show up. And so what I saw with that crystal orb and all of the beings inside of it, they could pass through that solid, uh, indestructible crystalline shield. No problem, but nothing else could go in and out that was not them. Now, why is that? Because those level of vulvas were pure energy beings. And I just said, wow. If that is what humans could transform into, that is an amazing future that people don't even recognize. So meanwhile, you are distracted with credit card reality. When you can turn into that, 
the aura of a sun. Whoa. Now, if that type of being awoke on the earth, there is no technology that could stop it. Nothing. Nothing. So I said, okay, well, then what is Heart's Flame? Heart's Flame is the folk soul that protects the sovereignty of the individual and the land, the purity, the innocence of the heart, the intention. And when that is violated, there is a violent reaction, right? Emotionally, mentally, whatever. So even beyond violence, but it creates... I'm using that term in an emotional context of how it would affect you internally, right? Versus being in harmony. And then we don't even know what harmony is. We're so far away from it. Because if that power existed, like the Queen of Elpham, whatever, goddess of sovereignty, that's what she represents to me. There would be no possible way of corruption. So that's why I feel most likely the future will be a total and complete transformation of reality. I mean, does it get to the point where if that kind of power comes, there's no more war because the alpha has stepped up to the plate to lead? Anyway, just a thought. And the power of sound transforming reality, the power of the chant. See, all of this has been cheapened. That's why in pop music, you see uh, both women and men, especially women, being portrayed as sex objects. So you were not focused on higher function. You were focused on base, primal, um, hormonal reaction. So those would be the energy centers that they would target to keep you at a low frequency of consciousness. Therefore, not evolving and building your folk soul light. As I said, overlay. So what did they do? And then I'm going to use it in a very blunt fashion. They took the image of our sovereignty goddess and smeared dog shit all over it. That is wrong. As I said, same thing with Merlin. Why is the base word murde meaning excrement? Do you see what I'm saying? Treating sacredness as of a pile of shit. That is what they have done. Less than that. It's not even fertilizer for the land. The winds are increasing. When I started talking about this, all of a sudden the wind started blowing crazy. Uh, I know. I'm telling you, shit's coming down the pipeline. That's why I'm being careful. I'm like, I'm not holding back. It, to a point. I'll be smart. <laughs> Woo. I can feel it on the wind blowing. Yeah. You're the Morrigan over here. Sovereignty of the land. Oh, wind blow. Deep down in a folk soul. Sovereignty of the land. Oh, shining we shine. Shine. Same deep waters as you are. Swimming in the same deep waters as you. Feel it at the edge of the deep green sea. Oh. Lady of the green sleeves, like I saw you in the woodland. And I call you now, goddess of sovereignty, oh, 
Morgon, morgon, morgon. Queen of Elfin, Morgo, Queen Mab, Bridget on Warrior, Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be waiting round the old tree, flaming well. Rough as I am, froggy deep down. But I can see the ripples on the fall. Way down, oh, yeah, lady of the way, remember, queen of sovereignty, oh, Morgan, vision, it's an oath to the land, oh, and an oath to your people in the circle round. Morgan, sovereignty. Oh, I feel it deep down. Oh, they don't see me anyway, but I know the goddess sees me every day and night, shine on, folk so light, shine on. There ain't no light, no bright on that side. Got a silver lamb, that's what they said. Easy on the way. So, Queen of Everything, I call you to come my way. Spring got us on the way, sovereignty. Oh, come to the circle round, top of the hill, they sand. Sword to the sky, as the light shines deep down, as the light shines. Deep down, deep down, deep down. Goddess of my heart and soul. I feel it deep down like a burning flame. Heart's flame. Heart's flame. Oh. Love of my people and deep down, deep down, deep diving folk soul. That's how it goes on the way. Easy on the way. I know. I know you're coming my way, and I'll be waiting deep down. Oh, you know, I see, see you in my dream. Queen of the Oh,
de Blas Marisol. From the poison of their lies, more With a wooden crown, wood and stone, blood and bone. You know, as my father told me long ago, and he prepared me for this day. Yeah. So we wear a crown, a crown of wood and stone. Kept on telling me, don't you know you are robbing of the wood, robbing of the wood, robbing of the wood. Oh, oh. And I know it's coming down. So as the wind does blow, yeah. well, I say you're the You're the inspiration. Queen of sovereignty. Got us a land, oh, oh. You better stay wise. Better stay wise. Stay wise. To the oak. That's what he said. To the root down. See the root down. As the wind blows, as the wind blows, way down. Every song I sing is for you. Queen of my heart and soul. Yeah. Married to the goddess of the sovereignty. Oh. I can feel you on the wind. Oh. Down, they said. Love is a soul. See the root down. Oh, oh. <laughs> of 
sovereignty. True crown of the land, true crown wood and stone, blood and bone. Shores the wind blows, I feel it deep down. So won't you come, Queen of Sovereignty, Goddess of the Land, and the war. I can feel it deep down. Deep down, oh, deep down, way in, goddess of my heart and soul. Robin I O Woodstone no so goddess of sovereignty hold the flame.